Hello everybody, so in today's vlog I wanted to talk about those two wonderful drums here. Those are the congas or the conga drums. And well, they are basically uh, meat and potato of percussion. Especially in uh, modern day pop music, whenever you hear uh, some percussion drums, so I mean percussion that is not a hand percussion like a shaker or a tambourine, which is arguably the most popular percussion instruments used. But when it comes to actual drums uh, or some more complex instruments, chances are that what you are hearing are congas. And they, so uh, their origins are a bit murky, uh, though most um, most widely spread agreement is that it was at the turn of 19th and the 20th century. Uh, on Cuba amongst uh, the people of African descent. Those drums, hence, are very widely used in a uh, lot of Latin uh, music genres, especially the uh, conga dance uh, and rumba. However, in those two, usually, especially in rumba, um, usually there is a multitude of drummers, each playing in individual drums, which is uh, in strict contrast to what you mostly see in uh, popular music when the percussionist has the entire set of uh, Congo drums. Maybe a little bit uh, about uh, this. Uh, why is it that you have so many drums as uh, one drummer? What are their types and so on? Uh, so uh, this what I have here is a very rudimentary set of just two drums. Um, this is like the littlest amount I could have to you know, play all the songs that I do. Though I had quite a few occasions when I played a single drum. But most of the rhythms, uh, well, you can play them on a single drum, but mm, I think it sounds better when you have two drums. However, there are sets when you can have even up to five of the congas. And each of the drums has uh, their own name. And basically a congo drum set is like a, well, a drum set, you know, like the, the regular drums that the drummers use. Uh, each drum has a different size, different pitch, and a different name, like I said. And uh, sometimes, mind you, their names may change, uh, depending on the size. Because, mm, well, okay, it may not be that, you know, it's the position in the, dr in the set, uh, d depends on the name of the drum. However, sometimes it can happen. But there are some manufacturing, uh, well, range uh, of the size for each drum. So, okay, about the names. What I have in here uh, are Quinto, which is the smaller drum, and Tumba, which is a bigger drum. And, um, well, like I said, here is an example when the position in the kit is more important than the size. Uh, because actually when I bought them, they didn't have assigned names as individual drums. I use it just to differentiate between the smaller and the bigger drum. But in a professional circumstances, it would be limited by um, by the size, so you know it could be that your uh, quinto, meaning smaller drum, uh, is not necessarily in the quinto size range. Uh, but okay, back on topic. So you have uh, quinto and tumba, which are the smaller and the bigger drum. When you have a drum in between them, in the middle, this one is called conga. Then you can also have a smaller drum, which is usually called a uh, super quinto or a bigger drum than this, which is usually then called a super tumba. 
Hence you have up to five drums in one set. Quite nice. Uh, um, to be honest, I would probably have problem with playing more than three drums in one set, but that's me, you know, I'm I'm not yet that professional. So how exactly do you play on those? Uh, well, uh, as you can see in uh, the short uh, demos I show you in this video, uh, you mostly play on, uh, well, quinto in my case, uh, but uh, I believe that when you have a full set uh, you usually use the uh, conga as uh, the main drum. And, well, this is pretty interesting, because uh, you have to place your non-dominant hand flat on the head, and then you use your dominant hand to strike here the rim. And the whole point is to make sure that the point where your fingers uh, meet your palm is right here on the edge. It has to fit nicely, you know, here the edge of the drum. Then you have this slap sound. <coughs> of course, you can move your hand, you know, use uh, more of the tips or more of the, of the palm to get deeper or shallower sound. And of course, uh, you can also play this drum um, open, like that. And on tumba, uh, is usually played open, uh, like you probably saw many times in my covers. And you also use your non-dominant hand to do some uh, c more closed uh, sounds. For example, you know, you have move like this when you play with your fingers, or move like this when you play with, well, your wrist, kinda. And uh, a fun fact. Um, they, of course, each of those strikes has their name in Latin, I mean in Latin, <laughs> in Spanish, of course, I meant, in uh, Latin American language. And, um, but uh, when you see lessons uh, from the English-speaking uh, uh, teachers, they commonly uh, call this a toe and heel strike, like on a kick drum. And um, so this is how you play the main drum. You have the this heel toe slap uh, and a tone uh, sound. And here you usually do the bass uh, strokes. Uh, but um, like I said, the important factor is that on the congas, you usually don't you know play uh, like you know like this, like on, on a djembe, for example. You uh, play almost exclusively here on the rim. Uh, however, well, like I always uh, said in uh, many other occasions when I was talking about percussions, get creative. And especially uh, when I play the open solos, um, you can see me playing, you know, here in the middle or uh, muting the tumba or whatever. Uh, because, well, like I say many times, m and maybe <laughs> arrange some of the natives that use this instrument, but a drum is a drum. Anyway, uh, this uh, this is base how you play the congas, the basics, the 101. And I strongly encourage you to just, you know, learn the basics, learn the tones, and then just watch professionals play, and maybe you will pick up something uh, pretty cool. And also a bit of trivia, you know, congas are usually regarded as one of the most difficult percussion instruments to learn, and I can absolutely see why. Uh, you know, I'm a percussionist who transitioned uh, from a drum kit, and, uh, well, I really didn't have a problem with most of the instruments. Cajon, for example, was very natural to me. 
Yeah, and I basically sat on it the first time and was already able to play just even just some basic beats. And the more I played, the more I learned. Uh, on the board run, sure, I needed some time to figure out uh, how to get the sound. But uh, once I got where where the sounds are, it was a smooth ride. Bongos were a no-brainer mo for most of the time, especially that I already had some experience with cajon. But the congas are absolutely different world, and. Uh, well, this is an instrument strongly for percussionist. Um, I don't think a drummer who never played percussion before would be able to, you know, play on the congas like this. And you know, I have several years of experience uh, as a as a drummer behind myself. Uh, well, and now as a percussionist as well. But still, I got the congas um, a little bit under a year ago. Um, they came to me in December, uh, and it took me about a week to just learn how to get the proper sound from them. I, you know, I struggled with the placement of my hand and so on, and I still sometimes miss the strike every now and then. And uh, you know, to play the basic beat, uh, well, uh, you can just look it up. Uh, my uh, cover of uh, Feliz Navidad, I think it would pop up somewhere up there. Uh, it was about two weeks in I had those drums and uh, well that was already uh, you know I don't know a fifth or sixth take and well it was as good as it could have been back then but you can just see how focused and stiff I am on this cover I mean okay I am you know not the drummer to you know just jump and dance around that's for sure uh, but you know there are songs where I play fairly loose, and uh, there are songs where I where I just <laughs> you know stiffen up because I have to focus on a difficult beat, and that's one of the cases for the latter thing. So yeah, you know when you get the congas, uh, even uh, if you are somewhat uh, experienced, uh, this is your first time playing, um, it's like playing a whole different instrument again you know you, you start from zero even if you even if you played some percussions before um, but I would also say that this is probably one of the most rewarding instruments because uh, once you get um, at least fluent on it you really can do seriously crazy stuff and um, you know when you play the, uh, more of a Latin music you know when the congas fit tone wise it is your mini drum kit, uh, just like the uh, cajon is for most uh, acoustic settings. So yeah, that was it for this vlog. Thank you all so much for watching and uh, see you next week in another video. Bye bye.